Let's talk about the aliens from Independence Day. And not just the first one, I mean the second one as well, because, well, they both correlate. But before we start that, I'm gonna go over the history of both movies so we have a better understanding of what these aliens are and basically why they're here. And then I will go over the physiology, so I'll make the history as short as possible, but as accurate as possible. So on Independence Day 1, Earth is just vibing, so to speak, and then we are invaded by a mothership that rests right outside of Earth and sends down these other giant ships. Each one covers the sky across the world. Us being humans, we don't understand it, we're scared of it, we want it gone, we try to attack it. It doesn't much like that, so what does it do? It blows up all of New York, so to speak. And us being Americans, whenever we're attacked, that obviously means war. So we devise a plan to try to attack these things. Now Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum, a scientist and a pilot, decide to try to invade the mothership with a ship that crash landed on Earth years ago, before the invasion ever happened. They get on there, they deliver a payload, or a virus, so to speak, to disable the shield so we can attack, and they do it successfully. That is movie one, in a nutshell. Now movie two is a bit different. It's basically like the first movie, just bigger ship and more steps. That's as clear cut as I can get. Now, let's talk about the physiology of the aliens. Now, from what we know, this right here is just an armor plating for what's inside. The aliens inside of this armor plating look somewhat like the aliens from War of the Worlds. A little bit. There's some resemblance, some not, but it still does. Now, during the first and second movie, these tendrils are able to be used to wrap around people's necks, just as we saw with the president, to be able to speak to the humans, because they cannot speak on their own. Why? I don't know, it was never explained. Now, as it stands from both the first movie and the second movie, these aliens look exactly the same. In terms of intellect for both of these movies, I guess you could say they're pretty smart. They're able to handle a gun and they're able to create giant ships, so I guess it's up there. I mean, after all, they were able to create an entire ecosystem on one ship, so they had some sort of civilization. So, yeah, intellect's up there. I guess you could say that they relate to humans somewhat. I mean, the tendrils aren't really used for malicious intent, only when absolutely necessary, like with humans, how we use our hands and our feet as a last resort kind of thing. But in the grand scheme of things, they act like humans do. All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the alien queen. And before we even continue, I just want to let it be known, she looks kind of cool. But that's besides the point. This is a harvester queen. She is one queen of many queens that exist. They serve something much higher. What? We have no idea. Now she takes on the look of her workers, only just 50 times bigger. She also has a shield to protect herself if she's in dire situations, like with the explosion that happened. She also has a hive mind to get her minions to do what she pleases. And as with all of them, her weakness is her back. 